Namaste everyone. On behalf of Bitosa Global, I would like to wish you and your family a very happy new year. Despite a challenging 2020, I know we have all learned a lot and we have adapted ourselves to operate in this new normal. I am confident as a human race, we will overcome the challenge in 2021 and make it a successful year for all of us. Silicon Valley, California is the hub of innovation. What I like about being in the US is that I can express myself and I can drive my passions. All it requires is a positive attitude and willingness to work hard. The system here is based on meritocracy. Having been born in India and raised in India and studied in BIT Mesra, there is a special bond that we always will have with our alma mater and with the people that I know in India. And that is for perpetuity. Obviously, I miss my friends. I wish I could be there with all of you in India, especially during these difficult times. I miss the cultural mirage that India offers. And of course, being a foodie, food is something that I absolutely miss from various parts of the country. Now, if you intend to come to the US for higher studies, please come with a clear plan of how you intend to build your career. Write down your objectives and build a plan around those objectives. Ensure you integrate with the local community and more importantly, leverage the Bitosa alumni group that is spread all across this country. In my opinion, having worked with many alumni associations, both here in the US and in other parts of the world, I can tell you Bitosa is by far the best alumni group in the world. Obviously, I might be biased, but I can tell you with great confidence that it is by far the best in the world. So finally, when you're here, you're successful, please ensure you give back to your home country. Get involved in India, be it in the areas of business ventures uh, or be it in the areas of nonprofits. Volunteer your time. Help people in the areas of education. Help people in the areas of healthcare. Donate your time and if you have the capacity, donate funds to the country of India as well. Because at the end of the day, that's the country that's made all of us in terms of who we are and what we are doing today. So in conclusion, a happy Parvasi Bharatiya Divas to all. Thank you to Bitosa Global team for having put this initiative together. And my very best wishes in regards to all of you. Jai Hind. Thank you. My global fellow alumni, I am delighted to be here. First of all, let me wish you very best for this coming year, which would be a greater year after COVID. For me, it has been a great year because after 55 years in the United States, it has allowed me to stay in Jaipur for a whole year. That means I was able to reconnect with my extended family, friends, and give back in more intense way. I am also delighted to let you know that 70 years ago, I had an opportunity, just like many, all of us, to go back to Birla Institute for our education. That education prepared me to not only compete in education at Berkeley, but then in corporate settings and finally helped me create a startup that went public in 2000. After that, I was able to come back and live in both countries, four months in India, eight months there. And I must tell you, the fortunate part is I feel that U.S. gave me an opportunity at the same time, freedom to worship in my own temples and build a India community center that allows us to promote our culture, our heritage, and give back to local people. So in summary, I feel good about India. I feel good about the United States. My request to you, my suggestion to you, if you decide to come to America, Although there's plenty of opportunity in India, you must come here to learn. 
learn even if you come back as a H1B because you must continuously learn otherwise you'll become obsolete. Become entrepreneurial in thinking and the only advice I can give to India is because I've had an opportunity to work with Modi ji, Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji and my chief ministers in Rajasthan is please focus on development and make sure India remains secular democratic country. Thank you. Jai Hind. I have attended a number of Bharti Prabhasi Divas. These are great occasions. So congratulations to the country and to all of us. My name is Jagdeep Aluwalia. I'm from the 72 to 77 production engineering batch from BIT Mesra and was a resident of Hostel 6 and Hostel 4. I currently uh, live in Houston, Texas in the United States of America where I moved in 1992. On graduation, I joined my father's manufacturing unit in Coca Ranchi and at the invitation of Dr. H.C. Pandey and the urging of my fellow classmate, now Vice Chancellor Gopal Pathak, I joined the Faculty of Production Engineering from 1980 till I moved out of town to start my own manufacturing units in Maharashtra. My response on my thoughts on how to assimilate in the community or the country we live in, I would suggest the three C's. The first is connect, the second is communicate, the third is collaborate. Connect with the community you move into, understand what their problems are and see how you can help solve them. Problem solving is the essence of any success, whether it is in community building or in business building. One strength BIT taught us was the ability to communicate. Use that ability to communicate with your community, add value to the community by volunteering to share your knowledge and expertise by serving on committees and boards. Let people know your strengths and your willingness to share your knowledge with your community. Collaborate with like-minded servant leaders to help create and grow a well knit group that can collectively make a difference in your community. We are proud that in Houston, we have leveraged the above three C's to create a very effective Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, which creates value within our local community and connect us, connects us back to our motherland. Greetings to all my fellow alumni across the globe and thank you Bits Global for hosting today's event. Thank you. Hello and welcome from Toronto, Canada. I moved here 20 years ago to pursue my master's and stayed back because of the values that Canada embodies and stands for, which include a pursuit of peace, of equality, and of equitable growth. Canada is known to be the creator of one of the most advanced technologies and markets, but make no mistake, Canada does not make these technologies. It attracts the best talent that goes ahead to build them and commercialize them. It has helped me and my family with tremendous economies of scope and scale. Over the past two decades, I have shaped and built my career in the automotive and telematics industries. And in the process, I've learned a few life lessons that I would like to share with you. The first one is about the power of slow compounding. As they say, you know, there are no shortcuts to success. Um, and life is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So in the same vein, I would say the power of slow compounding reveals itself later in life at, at when you're young, whether it's in terms of uh, knowledge, whether it's in, in terms of um, investment, in terms of connections, in terms of relationships, the more time you invest in these things, the more you stand to reap benefits from it later in life. Uh, the second thing I want to share with you is uh, strategy without implementation is just a dream. I lead corporate strategy in a global telematics company, and I can tell you that without implementation, strategy has no value. A million mile journey starts with the first step out of the door. So it's very, very important to implement what you have built or what you have in your mind. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is the power of communication. Communicate effectively and lucidly. In today's world, an idea is as great as it is uh, promoted. Um, so it's very, very important 
to build communication skills so that you can exchange ideas, you can promote ideas, you can absorb ideas. Um, so there, I'm a firm believer in over communicating if necessary, but never under communicate. And finally, I want to talk about uh, you know this unique ability that one must have to uh, build domain-specific knowledge at the same time have the power of horizontal thinking. You know, in today's world, which is increasingly getting interconnected, it's very important to spot threats, uh, trends in adjacent markets and see uh, you know unique uh, activities in markets that are global uh, and and the ability that one must have today is to be able to connect those dots and make sense of it all. Uh, so horizontal thinking is as important as vertical thinking. So on this Pravasi Bharati Divas, I'd like to offer my gratitude to BIT Mesra and to India for giving me the platform and the foundation uh, uh, that, uh, that, I, that I have benefited from. As an Indo-Canadian, I'm proud to see how India has made its presence felt in the global stage. Uh, I do believe that you know India is at a very very unique juncture right now, where opportunities like these do not come even in thousand years. And I'm talking about the demographic dividend that in India enjoys at this very moment. The United States benefited from that in in the post -war, World War II era. Then Japan did so in the 80s, uh, Korea in the 90s, and China in the 2000s. India now finds itself in that place where a very large population or pro proportion of population is now young population that is entering the workforce. No other country has this um, advantage. Next 20 years are going to be super crucial for India. Uh, and so that India kind of harnesses it, this, this democratic, uh, this, this uh, demographic dividend, it's very important that the focus is on infrastructure building, whether it's power infrastructure, road infrastructure, communication, transportation, education, health, infrastructure will create the pillars, the foundation on which India's miracle will be will be built on. So let's today uh, on this Pravasi Bharati Divas commit ourselves to enabling India in developing a world-class infrastructure that will support its meteoric rise and growth beyond that for many, many decades to come and thereafter. Happy Pravasi Bharati Divas. Hello, BITians. Happy New Year. My name is Anurag Shankar and I'm based in London, UK since December 2004. When I moved to this country, it was quite dark and gloomy winter. Thankfully, I was connected to a few BIT batchmates who helped me in settling down in a new place. So it felt like a small family. Today, we have a very large family called Bitosa UK chapter. We have more than 100 members, ranging from 1962 pass out to recent graduates. And they are working in all fields you can think of be it, be it computer, consulting, manufacturing, pharmacy, architecture, and some of them are running their own business. So if you are a BITN planning to visit UK for a short time on a holiday, or planning to move here for good, for higher education, for research, for a job, or to build your own, build your own business, please feel to contact us and leverage our network. We normally organize a few get-togethers, such as our annual meet in September every year. Then we have Holy Milan, Diwali Milan, and some other get-together, which we will be conducting again in, in, in the UK once the pandemic is over. We could not do any one of these things last year for obvious reasons. So hopefully you will join one of our events. And even if you are coming for a short holiday, we can try to organize a mini event during your visit, at least some of us can meet up with you and your family at a time and place convenient to you. Lastly, I would like to encourage all young BITians who are aspiring to come to the UK for higher studies, for research, or to build their own business, please do get in contact with us and let's see how we can work together. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and see you soon. Bye. I first came to the US in 1982 after BIT. I had grown up in Ranchi before joining BIT. And uh, I came to Chicago, which at that time, I think was the second largest city in the US. Uh, obviously, buildings were much taller than what I had seen in Ranchi, but what surprised me was 
how few people were walking around and I thought to myself uh, can this be the second largest city there are so few people walking around anyway things and viewpoints change over time as they have done here and in the US viewpoints also change on whether you are a student or whether you're working they give you different experiences I would strongly encourage BIT students to come to the US either to study or to work it will be definitely an interesting experience. Uh, I have over time uh, tried to keep an open mind and uh, not compare uh, uh, between two very complex societies, India and the US, and uh, just absorb all the experiences that one gets. And uh, one good way is to join a lot of local groups, volunteering groups, hobbies, uh, alumni associations and that will get you to know a place much better. Uh, I wish I had done more of that. So what do I like about America, my adopted country? A few things come to mind. One is that people here have a very open mind. They think of the endless possibilities that lie ahead of them and they dream big. There are no constraints. Secondly, everybody's work is valued. There is respect for an individual. And last but not the least, people who made it big and they have the financial capability, they are very philanthropic. They want to give, give back to society, uh, whether it is within the United States or outside. They're very philanthropic. So what do I miss about India? Well, the top thing that comes to my mind is the awesome food. All those puri choles and parathas and kebabs. Of course, I miss all of those. Uh, the second thing I would say I miss is the monsoon. When we were young, uh, we would just play in the rain. It was warm rain, unlike here, where the rain is actually cold and we can't really uh, enjoy it as much as we used to in India. And last but not the least, it's really the love and the compassion, uh, you know, that people have uh, in, in India. It's really not an individualistic society and uh, there is love all around you whether it's friends whether it's family whether it's neighbors there's a lot of connectivity between people so what advice would i give to uh, our alumni who are planning to come here to the united states uh, based on what i've learned when i came here almost 30 years ago one thing I learned is you should never underestimate yourself. When we come to a new country, we somehow feel that we are less than others, uh, even though we have dreams and we can do big, but for some reason, uh, I have seen that folks from India, when we come in the first time into uh, a Western country, we, we, we always underestimate ourselves. Uh, the other thing is, by nature, we are humble, which is really a good thing, and one should be and always be humble. However, there is always a need to show your talent, to, you know, talk about it. Uh, it's not really blowing your own horn. It's really talking about... Uh, your accomplishments, letting people know what you have done. Uh, I think it's very important uh, in, in the Western society. And that doesn't take away from, from your humbleness. And lastly, very important thing is to build your network. Of course, Bitosa Global itself is a network. It's very important to build networks and not only to build the networks, but to maintain them. And it takes a lot of effort to maintain a network, but it's very, very important. 
Greetings from Singapore and my best wishes to the global Bitosa family on the occasion of Pravasi Bharti Divas. Singapore has been my home for the past 15 years and I graduated from BIT in 1984 uh, and worked in India in the manufacturing sector for a few years before I moved here to work in a consulting and advisory firm. Today I would like to highlight the opportunities that Singapore presents. Uh, Singapore is a country which, is, which has been built on meritocracy. It gained independence in 1965 and in a matter of just three decades, it transformed itself from a third world nation into a first world nation. And today, if you look at Singapore, it always features in the top global rankings, maybe competitiveness, ease of doing business, innovation, safety, and even maybe something like best country for children. So I would like to encourage uh, students from BIT who want to consider Singapore as a destination for further education, for the career, or even for uh, business opportunities. Today, Singapore is uh, emerging as a leading top uh, B-school uh, destination. Uh, Singapore offers a wide variety of both local as well as uh, international universities. Uh, it's four local universities, the National University of Singapore, uh, the Nanyang Technological in uh, University, the Singapore Management University, and the Singapore University of Technology and Design are all globally recognized uh, institutions. Uh, some of the leading global international uh, universities have also set up their uh, Asia campus in Singapore. This includes the likes of Wharton, uh, INSEAD, uh, MIT, uh, even SPJAN uh, and ESSEC. From a business standpoint, I think Singapore is ideally positioned uh, as a gateway uh, into Southeast Asia, China, Japan or even Korea. Uh, it's low corporate tax structure, a very strong IP protection, a uh, diverse range of industries from fintech to manufacturing to uh, healthcare, uh, a very innovative culture, uh, as well as uh, you know a very business friendly environment. All of these are very important considerations for you to make uh, when you think about your, uh, you know, either about making investments or even uh, from a career standpoint. And the best part is Singapore is just a four or a five hour flight away from any major city in India. We have a very small network uh, of Bitosa in Southeast Asia, uh, not a formal setup, uh, but this is something that I would very uh, seriously like to pursue to set up uh, maybe a Singapore chapter for Bitosa here uh, I, uh, and uh, you know work with other uh, alumni who have been settled in Singapore. So wish you all the very best and look forward to meeting some of you uh, uh, in the future uh, in 2021. Thank you and all the best. Good evening and warm greetings to all my BIT friends on the occasion of Bitosa Global's Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. It's a pleasure speaking to you. I got sent a bunch of questions and I picked three uh, around which I wanted to share my views. Uh, the first one was, uh, what did I do to assimilate in the country I live in? Well, on the personal side, I don't believe I made any conscious changes neither in my dressing style, eating habits, nor my accent, as you would see. In California, where I live and work, being your authentic self is pretty well accepted. Of course, you quickly learn some do's and don'ts that make you a better listener, more environmentally conscious, respect diversity, and so on. Since social interactions are quite low here, you have to seek out forums for interacting like your community center, your kids' little league baseball teams, other technology networking forums, etc. I did quite a bit of that and assimilated quite well. The second question was around what India as a country can do to get people like me to contribute more to the economy, etc. Well, on one hand, I don't think your country has to do anything for you to contribute. It is your country after all. And you shouldn't find uh, reasons to look for to contribute. You can always find one or more ways to do that. There are no prerequisites or preconditions. It could be in education, charitable causes, global reach for Indian companies, etc. On the other hand, there are areas where a lot can be achieved 
through significant emphasis in public policy and industry involvement, product innovation, tourism, entrepreneurship, and global partnerships are some examples. And lastly, there was a question on what are some of the life lessons I have learned during my career in the country I live in? Well, it is not specific to this country, but lessons I absorbed working 20 years in India got further strengthened in the US over the past 20 plus years. And these are to strive for excellence, excellence in the field you are in, could be as a teacher, a researcher, an innovator, a manager, or any role or function. Excellence is aspirational for yourself and inspirational for everybody around you and the organization. The second learning is that personal and professional integrity is super critical. It is rewarded and respected. There are no shortcuts, just as your parents told us. Eliminate cynicism from your life's vocabulary is the third lesson. A sense of humor is not only great and necessary so that you don't take yourself too seriously, but steer towards positivity in your outlook. I think cynicism is infectious and deflates morale like nothing else. And lastly, teamwork and compassion. It is a lot about making others around you successful, both in your professional and personal lives. I hope you enjoyed my views on these topics. I would love to hear yours. Uh, take care and wish you the very best in all your endeavors. I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you and bye. Hi, I came to UK in the year 2005 for pursuing my PhD at the University of Edinburgh through the Commonwealth Scholarship. I came in UK with my wife and two children after 16 years of working as senior scientist engineer at Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO in Ahmedabad. The best thing that I like living in UK is the creative education system, independence in work, and good balance of family and work, and of course, international people and food. Few things that I feel much better back home is the competitiveness in the education, the social bonding, and of course, very strong culture and the value system that we have. For those who want to come to UK to live, my advice is to look for good locality to stay, which affects the schooling and to also know the culture and expectations of the people living here. I have now worked for more than 30 years professionally in academics, industries, and education sector, and a very active STEM ambassador with a mission to create next generation of innovators through Cambridge Innovation Foundation and have now touched more than 3000 students globally, including India. I wish you all the best and I'll be happy if some of you come in UK and I'll be very happy to be in touch with them. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye. Great to share this message on Pravasi Divas. I have lived in Singapore for about 20 years, but today I'm speaking from Malaysia. You can see the well-known Twin Towers, the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur in the backdrop. So my message is that of the learning and sharing with uh, the people where we live in these countries. And my experience in living in Singapore is that it's a wonderful country, well known for its immaculate system, rules, cleanliness. For example, I have never experienced a power cut in Singapore. 
in uh, 20 years or so. And it used to be a fad with me to look for a broken bulb or a fuse bulb in the streets. So I would be looking for it and in the last so many years, I could only find once that there was one bulb out of millions or hundreds of thousands of bulbs, one was broken. So that is the, you know, the, the marvel of uh, a country like Singapore. Those are the areas where we can learn so much. But then I also look at the cultural diversity and that impresses me so much. I delved into yoga and spirituality and Bhagavad Gita, you know, in Singapore. And to my great, you know, amazement, I could find there is so much you can do in those areas. Because uh, after all, in my opinion, the basis of life is the values, is uh, the culture, is uh, the love and the peace that we need to inculcate in our own lives and share with the people who may not be so much familiar about it but then in every country there is so much to learn for example the same diversity i see in malaysia i see in singapore and uh, we have to have this uh, this uh, uh, sentiments of gratitude you know that we come to work in a different country and it is so much important for us to assimilate in the culture to develop that sense of gratitude and share you know the culture and the values that we bring in so that's my message thank you so much hello bitians and bitosa members uh, this is rajiv gupta from bit mesha so 1990 to 94 Tripoli batch. I live in Silicon Valley, uh, Bay Area, as you would know, uh, for the last 10 years, and um, pretty fortunate enough to move here, meet some wonderful Batyans. The thing about this area is the unique appetite to take risk and experiment. It's something that you we usually would cherish in a very secure environment like a college. So think about Silicon Valley much more like a uh, big city with that kind of a risk appetite and experimentation uh, desires. So if you get a chance, please do come visit uh, the Bay Area, visit Bittians here. It's a fabulous area with a very unique culture uh, globally. It's the only place that you would find. The one thing that I've found over the years that has kind of uh, helped me is uh, from the days of you know, the BID days onwards is the is to differentiate yourself and um, once you graduate there are thousands of graduate and you know, hundreds and thousands of graduates coming out and the key at every stage in life is to figure out how do you you know differentiate from your colleague so that you get the next promotion the next opportunity and so forth so whoever you you know wherever you are and um, whatever you do figure out how do you differentiate if you're an entrepreneur you're doing your next startup, how do I differentiate from, from the other person? And if you continue to do that and continue to experiment, take risk, there you go, you have it. So that's me, again, Rajiv Gupta, um, and look forward to talking to more Mbatians as you come here. I know. I'll just start with what are the top two, three things you like about the country you live in? Well, the first is sense of humor. I was made very welcome in a uniquely British way, which consisted of mocking me and my country mercilessly. I eventually understood that British people do this to people they like. It can be of test uh, to begin with. If you get the humor, you will fit in. Uh, the second thing which I liked was the pubs. What a fantastic institution. Of course, some of them have been taken over by big corporates, but so many of them are left as they have been for decades, uh, if not centuries, and there are such uh, convivial places. In my first month in the UK, a work colleague told me, if you ever feel low or lonely or have nothing to do, just go to the pub. Just go. Magic will happen. 
And you know what? He was right. Best place to strike a conversation, best place to get to know people, best place to understand the culture. Uh, you know, it's just it's just sitting in the pub and making new friends. Uh, countryside. The cities can be a bit semi and impersonal at times, but the countryside is gorgeous. Plus, they have some truly outstanding areas like uh, Brick and Spicken in Wales, Lake District, Yorkshire Dales, Dartmoor Devon, the Peak, Peak District, uh, and Scotland, pretty much all of it. The music scene, for example, is very, very nice, uh, and, and the British bands are actually very good. The job market, uh, it's really dynamic, and uh, with very little discrimination towards foreigners. Uh, imagine having a comprehensive range of health services uh, in the UK, that too free of cost for most of the services for the entire resident population. Uh, NHS has been consistently ranked uh, as, uh, as among the best healthcare service provider. Uh, interestingly, UK spends only about 10% of its GDP on healthcare uh, compared to, for example, 17% in the US. Yet it managed to spend about 120 billion pounds annual budget more efficiently than many other countries. Uh, the other thing you would like is football. It's just uh, and just all the live sport in general, rugby, tennis, etc. If people are into into uh, into games, uh, the people the people are a lot more friendlier, open, and welcoming than people think and imagine. Uh, and almost uh, all of them are honest and fair. Of course, uh, you know there are exceptions uh, in any country. Uh, <clears throat> the clubbing, uh, you know, it's it's very interesting part of the culture over here, which is which is very. Uh, ingrained in the system for a long time and it's something which is very enjoyable. Finally, a word for law and order and the police. Uh, the much maligned but seriously compared to most police forces in the world, they are approachable, helpful and fair. Uh, you know, that's that's very, very, uh, and they don't discriminate. And and going back to the earlier point about NHS, uh, you know, it's, it's also very, very fair and they don't even ask you your nationality to begin with if you are in an A&E situation, etc. What are the top two, three things I miss about India? Uh, the first thing, of course, is the family function, the engagements and the weddings, the festivals, uh, you know, uh, the, the, kind of, the, the kind of festival celebration which we used to have in India, you can't find it anywhere else. The food, the traditional value for our kids, uh, you know, all these things do I do miss as far as UK is concerned. Uh, as a newcomer to your country, what would you advise to Bitosa alumni? Well, First of all, the weather. The weather is really awful. Uh, you can get all four seasons pretty much in a week. The worst thing about this is that making plans that depend upon weather is impossible. You would think that a weekend is in the middle of summer, uh, you know, but would and would be guaranteed a warm and dry day, but not in this case. It can rain at any point, literally. It might be nice for a couple of days, then for a few days at, at, at any time of the year. We can suddenly have a cold slap and it can snow in May. Similarly, I remember a Tuesday in February a few years ago when I was walking around in just a t-shirt and no jumper and no jackets. Uh, you know, when you first come to UK, the biggest concern is how to get a bank account open. This is a typical chicken egg problem and it requires things like proof of address and some other things usually require a bank account. Uh, and you, you will have to get used to living in 19th century houses with utilities from 19, 1980s. Low water pressure is, 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 is the first thing which strikes you. Uh, owning a car is expensive. Fuel costs are a are lot more and you absolutely must have insurance. Uh, I can go on and on, but uh, the most important thing is healthcare is free for all, all everybody residing in the UK. You can pay for private healthcare if you want to, but uh, healthcare is extremely good over here, so you don't need to really worry about it. What are some of the best practices you would like to share with your alumni? Well, hard work and focus has no replacement. If you want to build a career in corporate sector, be very focused on what value you're providing versus what salary bracket you fall in. Higher salaries will uh, higher salaries will chase you once you once your value gets recognized immediately. Similarly, if you want to be an entrepreneur, be prepared to do huge amount of research and bring focus on what you want to create and whom you want to service. Be cautious about your funds and manage your finances well. Be ready to help anyone who comes to you for help. This is the best way to give back to the society. Thank you very much and all the best. Hi dear <clears throat> Bitos alumni, Happy New Year. And my response to your questions are here. Number one, the question is, 
what are the top two or two, three things we like about the country. The number one, very important, I will say, this country provides equal opportunities to all citizens, meaning if you have any ambition you, you, to achieve your goals, whether is in your profession or in the public service, the, you all have to do is put your efforts and you will achieve it one day. Your goals will be fulfilled. Number two, we like this about uh, living, which is the overall clean environment and suburban living with open areas around you. And especially when you live in suburban, there's no parking problems at all. So those are the things we like. The number two question is, what are the top two or three things we miss about India? I will say particularly we miss your own language, you, your community, and your loved ones who are still there, you miss them. Number three is, question is, what are some of the life lessons we learned during our career in the country? I would say we put the best and sincere efforts in your profession and you are bound to succeed. Question number four is, knowing what we know now, what we have done differently, I will say, after learning your profession, could be, I could have started my own business. That's the only difference I will, could have done it. The number five, as a newcomer to your country, what would you be your advice to Bidosa alumni? My advice is work hard, be straightforward and sincere with the people you come across at work or otherwise. Question number six is, what did you do to assimilate in the country you will live in. You know, in? The question to answer is this. I do not remember, was there anything special we did? It just came very naturally. The thing is, this is a free country. There's people from all over the world, and there was no difficulty in mixing up easily. There was no problem. As a matter of fact, I was able to get my job the, the same week I arrived. So, as a matter, and I'm still there working the same company. So, I don't see any problem in mixing up. It's all you are being a professional. You know, people respect you. Uh, the number seven is about if you are a prime minister, what are the top two, three things you would do to make India great? You know, this is a, quite a political question, and i rather pass it. Thank you. Uh, the other question is eight. Number eight is, uh, what are the, some of the best practices you should like to share? I would say the best practices to keep yourself updated in your field and sincerely deliver your responsibilities, you do wonderful. The number nine is what should be what should be your advice to student 
and faculty at EIT Masara who are interested in coming to the Janait, the country I live in. Uh, here, I will say, if they are interested, all the universities will like the students outstanding in their education. And other thing is most appreciated and liked is these sports. You should be playing means, you know, be aware of the sports and you'll be playing about the sports. That's what they like. Sometimes you can say that people more activities more than just the education. University like that. Hello and Happy New Year to all of you. My name is Rajesh Srivastava and I graduated from BIT in 1984. 2020 has been a rough year for all of us. Hoping 2021 will be good for business, economy, and life in general. Also, best wishes for Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. I was one of the invited speakers on technology in 1998 at Vikyan Bhavan for the first Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. I have some fond memories of meeting and chatting with Prime Minister Vajpayee when he hosted us for a high tea at the Hyderabad house. Once again, very good wishes to everyone for 2021. Bye for now. Stay safe. Hello, BITNs. My name is Shukrate Kosh. I'm from the batch of 1983, that's 83 to 87. My branch was electrical engineering. And I now live in Northern Virginia, which is right outside Washington, DC. And I've been asked by the Pitosa team to actually provide some uh, comments on uh, how life is and where I live and what are some of the things that are uh, appealing to me and how do I, uh, uh, how do I, you know, what are the things I miss in India and things like that. So, um, as I told you, I live in Washington, D.C. And the reason I came to this country is because um, prior to coming, I actually worked in India for about four years. And what really um, kind of uh, frustrated me was all the bureaucracy, the Babu culture, the difficulty of getting things done. Now, please note that this is early 90s. A lot of things have changed so, since then. India has become a, become a much open economy. And also a lot of the things that we used to not take for granted uh, is much easier today. So India has changed, but that was then and this is now. So those are things that really appeal to me, that I was coming to a country that um, was easier to get things done, um, easier to uh, achieve your goals, easier to buy a house and things like that. Now, what I really miss is all my family, my friends, the food. Definitely, those are things I miss. And I, I do uh, look forward to my annual trips back to uh, Kolkata, where my uh, mother and my uh, brother and the rest of my family is. Um, what are some of the life lessons you have learned during your career? I think one of the most important things I've learned is to is that there is no substitute for hard work. If you put in hard work and you are honest, you will achieve your goals. Now, several of us in the engineering field are not very marketing oriented, right? We cannot sell ourselves. We, we are not very glib at talking, but that's okay. There is a place for people like that, but for some of us who are more technical, I think the most important thing is be yourself, be authentic, be uh, focused on what you think is important and never ever uh, compromise on your um, goals and your morals. Ethics is one of the most important things. It's not taught enough in different places, especially in engineering schools. Ethics is very important there is no shortcut to making money or there's no shortcut to reaching uh, a certain echelon. I think working hard and getting to the appropriate grades in your career or appropriate grades in your uh, life 
is very, very important. I think that is one of the most important things. As a newcomer to uh, the USA, what would be my advice to Pedosa alumni? You know, I'll tell you, I've met a lot of people coming from uh, BIT in the last uh, couple of years. And I think the most important thing is to wherever uh, you're coming to this country, reach out, reach out to the Pedosa alumni. This is your family. We're here to help you. We have a lot of events. Uh, if you, you know, if you're alone in a city and there's, uh, it's like Thanksgiving or Christmas and you have no place to go, reach out to your Vitosa family. We are your family away from family. Uh, why did you assimilate in the country you live in? I think I've uh, talked about this already that, you know, I, I, I think I found uh, meritocracy and uh, the ability to work hard and reach certain goals to be very important. And I was able to get that um, easily in this country. Now, not that those things were not available in India today. Remember, it was not available in um, 90, 1990 when I decided to come to this country. Uh, some of the best practices you'd like to share with the alumni. I think I've shared several uh, of them already. Being authentic, being uh, true to yourself, being ethical, uh, being hardworking, and there's no substitute for these. And uh, these are things that uh, you 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 will find throughout your life that these will hold you in good stead wherever you go. Um, what can India as a country do to get people like you to contribute more to the economy? I think what we can do is um, uh, invest in India. If you're working with companies, work with um, them to open divisions in India. Uh, also, and if, if you feel that you're up to it, uh, work with uh, NGOs in India. India needs a lot of help in different ways, and there are a lot of good NGOs. And uh, find those good NGOs, work with them, raise funds from um, not only Indians, there are non-Indians too who are more than happy to contribute and make a positive contribution. There are a lot of uh, 5013Cs, which are basically uh, not-for-profits and you can get a tax deduction. Work with them, try and contribute to the have-nots in India. There's a lot of have-nots and there's a lot of uh, work that can be done in things like mental health, in hygiene, in um, primary education and things like that. And if you're ever in Washington, D.C., do look us up. Um, I'm happy to uh, host you and get you introduced into the Washington, D.C. Vitosa Circle. With that, thank you very much for your time.